On today's show, we have Pei Chen, the VP and Head of Growth at IOV Labs. We're going to discuss details about the company's products, what they achieved so far, and what to expect from them in the future. Can you give our listeners at the basics what IOV Labs does? Sure. So IOV Labs is a company that was started in Argentina back in 2014. It has three main business lines. First one is RSK blockchain platform. This is the sidechain project on top of Bitcoin with EVM compatibility. It has the roof economy pillar, which is the layer three building architecture. So it's providing infrastructure and a building building blocks for projects to build on top of RSK as well as any other layer one or layer two blockchain platforms. And the last, we have a Taringa. Taringa is a social media platform that we acquired back in a few years ago. And now it's on its path to become a Web3 social media platform. So we've been around um, for quite a few years now. And our vision is to create a very open and inclusive financial system for all the populations around the world, especially with the emphasis of bringing the blockchain technology and products to the emerging markets where underbanked and unbanked populations are. And that's basically our target users. And our mission is to do so through working with the most brilliant and advanced fintech partners that are currently in our ecosystem or outside to help them build Web3, build blockchain projects, distribute applications or other layer threes. Now, you guys have been around quite a while, right? When did you guys kind of start? Yeah, we've been around since 2014, 2015. I think the founding teams, and there were a group of technologists and businessmen, very successful entrepreneurs from Argentina. I think they got together, wanted to build something that is leveraging the Bitcoin security as a bottom layer, settlement layer, but also understand the importance of having smart contract programmability and the way to build logic and workflows on top of Bitcoin, because at that point, Bitcoin was very much in the class, an asset class. You can, can do quite much with Bitcoin, but look outside, you can see, you know, Ethereum and other ecosystems are coming up with different distributed applications. And they're able to do so because of the smart contract programmability. And the origin of the RSK platform basically is to marry the Bitcoin security, a settlement layer, as well as the compatibility and the programmability that the EVM chains promises. Got it. And so, I mean, I know RSK did quite a big raise, I think, back in 2018, right? Is that correct? <laughs> when, um, funny story, yeah. So back in 2018, when we were at the point realizing that we need to provide infrastructure platforms, um, not just the blockchain platform itself, but also the tools and services that, you know, you would need as a project. So we launched Rift as a token economy. And that was the time we raised the, the majority of the capital that paved a lot of our runway for us to kind of research and take our time. Our research team took their time to really look into what's the best way to bring the full potential of RSK. And we built a lot of amazing technology and we're at the point of kind of consolidate all the technology pieces. Now we're on the way to prioritize and commercialize them. I wouldn't say like commercialize is the, the focus. It's the, we're at the end of the day, a, a purpose-driven trust as a company. So we are thinking of what we're thinking is a sustainable way to put the technology components together and create meaningful products that can benefit the end users through our partners. Got it. So now how big is the team comprised of people today? Is that across the globe? We have just shy of 200 employees around the globe. It's a quite dis decentralized team with people anywhere from the U.S. I'm based in U.S., for the for example, but we have a strong team in Argentina and in uh, the U.K. as well as in other areas of uh, Europe. And also, you know, slowly building up our presence in areas like Asia and Nigeria and other parts of Africa. We have since hired a lot of senior and experienced product managers and senior executives in different parts of the world to really come together and figure out what would be the uniquely suitable um, products that can be built on RSK and with the RIF infrastructure. So we have a few very clear streams, including the payment suite, and there's the DeFi gateway set of thinking, but we also have 
the identity marketplace as well as the the wallet aspect of things. So it's all going to come out very soon. Um, we're very excited about that. So can we discuss, like, break down a few of those, like in regards to the payment suite, what are going to be the benefits for the user? I think what we are looking to do with the payments product is first is how can we quickly really leverage the Bitcoin market cap? So there's a way to currently we call it a pull pack or pack in pack out process. How can we make that process even faster, more secure, more at scale? There's also the element of payment experiences. How can you provide a very seamless and very fluent user experience using a very different payment rail? Traditionally, we're dealing with, you know, currently you might use credit card a lot and you use rely on the Visa and the MasterCard payment network, right? Because you trust the security of it. But there's a intermediary layer there and there is a pretty high cost, I think, to associate it with doing business that way, and it's very much centralized. What we're trying to explore with this is we wanted to rely on this crypto rail, but also to create very fast, very cheap, affordable, and seamless cross-border and or domestic payment experience at a very individual level. So what would that look like? Maybe that would be related to when we we think about the, the payment products on RSK, it's going to be about how can we provide a very cheap per transaction payment experience and how can we leverage the Bitcoin if you have a balance sheet or you have a, some Bitcoin, how can you use that to pay for your day-to-day -day utility bills or something else? Or you can just store it as an investment choice. But either way, it's, a, it's an alternative payment to what you currently have out there. And at the end of the day, it's also about how do you make it very easy for projects to deploy a specific application using your payment products, right? So the API um, type aspect of things and how you integrate and how you deploy with those projects is another thing we're looking at. So, yeah, we need the vendors or the companies to be able to integrate seamlessly. And then we also need the users to be able to use that seamlessly, right? Exactly. So users basically don't need to know the intricacies of the backend technology or Sometimes they may don't even need to know they're using blockchain at all. Besides just you guys are just projects in the whole space, you know, how do you think we get from that zero to one faster or more of that cold start to get more users on board, whatever we're building? We'll have to work on um, UX, UI and um, <laughs> the front end stuff, which is, I think, for the entire blockchain ecosystem, we can do better, but that kind of stuff usually comes last somehow. But I think a lot of times end users can be intimidated and scared away with very complex and, and clunky processes, right? You have to, if you have to spend an hour to set up your wallet to go and connect with the first DeFi protocol and then get your funds in and out in the week, right? Um, then right away you lose that end user. So I think it's, it's really important to bear in mind to like put yourself in the shoes of the end user and think about what would be least resistant and the least intimidating way of trying out a very new and a very cutting edge um, product. I think that's what we need to focus on. When you guys are discussing your products that you're going to work on coming up and for the roadmap, right? I guess, how do you go out into the world and figure out what those problems are going to be and then decide which ones to work on? I think, you know, it's very simple. It's about looking for that use case that could really benefit and drive meaningful adoption of the technology and the building infrastructure. So very quickly, I think this brings us to the concept of everyday DeFi, because we do believe that our end user is the everyday average Joe and, you know, users that really do need access to financial systems, but currently do not. So the use cases that would really be beneficial for them is some secure, simple, simple ways to do payments, peer-to-peer -peer payments, cross-border payments, remittances, for instance, and it's about how to find a way to safely deposit their their money and realize um, some return. You know, instead of if you put it in a bank, you don't get anything back, right? Or you don't have access to banks to begin with. And it's about uh, lending or borrowing with perhaps like a different type of collateral. It's about, you know, being able to have that freedom um, over your financial situation. So when you're thinking about like 
who you're going to target first. Is there certain areas that you believe that will adopt quicker than others? If you look at the stats, it, it became quite clear that some of the fastest um, growing markets for, for this technology is, the, is in the developing countries. It is in the emerging markets. So for us, we have seven key markets and they're between Latin America and Southeast Asia. So that's what we are, we're starting with, right? And we also see some strong momentum in Africa. So what are some things that over the next few years that you guys see, you know, you know, on the roadmap, what do you guys, what else are you trying to accomplish that you think is going to be a fit for the market? I think we're um, constantly in the state of trial and error. I think we have to kind of uh, be very flexible. Currently, we're working very hard on, on payments, gateway, identity products. But I'm sure, you know, if you ask me a year from now, and we might have a, a different uh, thought, right? Like what, what's been put out there and proven useful.